Well, folks, I really didn't feel like doing a rant today. But honestly, I'm not surprised that I am. You know how there's the whole PlayStation 30th anniversary game. They're having the most expensive console in gaming history, at least from as far as I know. The 30th anniversary and blah blah blah, and it's just to make money. Yeah, well, one of the things that they did where theoretically you wouldn't actually need money is they made online free-to-play this weekend. And I even looked on social medias and stuff. What that means is once it's midnight and whatever region you're in, then it's free-to-play. And guess what, folks? This is New Zealand, and the region that I'm in right now, it's after midnight. So theoretically... That means because it's after midnight on Saturday, and I even looked at the social media, specifically there's even a New Zealand one, at least, from what it seems, and it seems to be legit and all that. It said that you could play for free online, which is total BS that you have to pay for online anyway, but I've talked about that many times before. But guess what, folks? I'm sure y'all can already guess it. There's a reason I'm making this video. The online is not working. I have no idea how or why, but it ain't. I've actually had issues like this in the past. This is specifically the account that I made to where I could play GT7 early, and it didn't work there either, even though for those that were actually in New Zealand, they could play it. This is the definition of something that I can't actually say or else I couldn't put it on other sites. But I'll say this, it rhymes with bowl spit. It definitely rhymes with that. Because this means that someone that would actually be living in New Zealand, but let's say they have a vacation in a different country, are truly really screwed. Because... The PlayStation Network, network recognizes a connection coming from the U.S., or theoretically this could be anywhere and where it's before midnight. That means that can't play with friends or whatever it may be. Can't play with friends or any online or any of that. That truly really ain't fair. Just because someone's on vacation or whatever it may, may be doesn't mean that the, they shouldn't be able to take advantage of this. Granted, you... I know what you're saying. I'm obviously not on vacation. I'm an American trying to cheat the system. But the way that I see it, if PlayStation actually wants to have new players, they should make the online free. Remember how I said earlier in the video about the, like, the most expensive console in gaming history? At least so how I understand it, it's true. Especially for the one coming out now. A lot of the times when there are new models released of a console, there's like a cheaper version of it or a way in which it seems more economical for the time or whatever it is. Now, the PlayStation Pro is even more expensive. To the point of the only people who would realistically get it are die-hard fans of PlayStation anyway. For people who actually want to play it new, they're probably just going to get a PlayStation Four, because really about the only reason to use a PS5 is faster load times and better graphics. There ain't even really all that many truly PlayStation 5 exclusive games out there. And the ones that are at this point are fairly old and people seen a whole heck of heap about it anyway. At this point, they're not enticing new players to play online, nor are they enticing new players to get their new system. I genuinely believe at this point that PlayStation, Sony, however you want to word it, truly does not care about getting new players. Yeah, you may be thinking as well that because the systems don't actually make money for the developers anyway, that it would make sense that it's more expensive. The counter-argument to that is we've seen time and again that and for quite a while now, the way that the bulk of the money is made with video games is, well, in the old days, it was called nickel and diming. Nowadays, it's like 50 and $100 billing with microtransactions that in the old days were microtransactions. 
the way in which money is made for the vast majority now is through monetization of the individual games. It's not through the console sales or even initial sales of the video games to begin with. And guess what, folks? If less people have the console, then there's going to be less people buying microtransactions. If less people can play online, there's going to be less incentive for people to pay microtransactions. Guess what, folks? If people could actually play online for free, as it should be, and literally PlayStation themselves said that it would be back in the day, they literally said that because Xbox made it to where you have to pay to play online, that PlayStation would have it for free. They quite literally lied. That's the definition of lying, folks. That really is. But again, many other people made videos better than me on that. It's to the point now that it doesn't even make corporate greed sense to do this anymore. Because, I mean, put it this way. If I could actually play games online, I'd run right next to it, Crew 2. Now that it's a dollar, maybe, just maybe, I would actually consider getting some of the other miscellaneous DLC or whatever it may be with that. Because everything's on sale and all that. But given that I can't play online, I have a far less incentive to do that, and frankly, I ain't going to do so. I would say a lot of people right now would be getting the Kurtu, 2, would actually consider getting DLC if they could, you know what, folks, play online. Granted, I'd say to some extent, PlayStation actually kind of planned it in that way. They saw where not a lot of games are going on discount anyway, so they made it to where it's free to play online. Because it's getting people addicted. It's getting people hooked. It's getting people drugged. It's getting it to where people get a, a little bit of taste of it and they want more. They're getting people hooked knowing that those who get addicted are going to then pay for the online. They're doing this on purpose. They don't say, oh, it's a favor that they're having the free online weekend or whatever. One... If they were truly advertising it as they would, I would be playing online right now and not making this video. And two, they're making it sound like it's fan service and all that with the PlayStation 30th anniversary, but really the point of the fan service is those who are, are the diehard fans buy, with real money, a whole heck of a heap of overly expensive products that are really just rehashes and recolors and re-livery and all that of stuff that already exists. It's probably even going to how it is with the stuff coming out later as well. Like one example being the My First Grand Turismo, which I'm actually thinking of making a video on that specifically, but I'll just say, in short, the main reason that is getting made is so that, again, it can give people a taste. It can get people hooked. It can get people addicted. That sort of thing. Those who like playing that free thing are going to love getting the full thing. It's not at all true fan service. It's just... To get people hooked. That's how it is. Free samples have been used in the industry for a long time. Don't think of this as a favor. Don't think of this as loyalty. Don't think of this as anything but what it actually is. It's corporate greed and it's not even all that effective of corporate greed. I guess you could always make the counter argument of oh that means that if you're paying to play online then the servers would be better. Folks, have you really played an online game recently, whether paying for it or not, like playing it, paying it, playing it on PC and not paying for online, or paying for online on a PlayStation? Either way, the servers usually are underwhelming. That's how it is with most online games anymore, is that they work even worse as time goes on. Back a long time ago, a game had to release, and it worked. Nowadays, a game can be two years after release, and it still doesn't. We're to the point now where it literally does not matter. I mean, another example, like I kind of hinted on, compare people playing on PC to people playing on consoles. Sure, some games have more hackers on PC, like Grand Theft Auto, or whatever it may be, but I think even that one, they're actually slowly getting somewhere with the, with the hackers, but there's a whole heck of a heap of games out there in which the experiences are almost identical, if not even slightly better on PC, because people can optimize it for the individual PC 
to get better frames per second and all that sort of things. If anything, the online experience on PC where you don't pay to play online is better than which it is on console in which you do. There's quite literally no reason whatsoever in which you should be forced to pay to play online, especially because it's a failure of corporate greed. If people could play online for free, they could actually make more money for the macro transactions. Again, many a person has done a video in the past, and I will, and many others will continue to in the future, about how terrible of a system and how unfair and how Sony themselves are quite literally lying about paying to play online. In the past, they said they weren't going to do that. But guess what, folks? They definitely are. Even when they quite literally say on their social media, no social media people should be fired, by the way. Probably AI doing it, so no person would end up being fired. But if anything, they just need to retool the AI or whatever. Because it's spurf, it's Saturday, and in the region that I'm in, it's after midnight, so I should be playing online right now. Guess what, folks? I ain't. So those AI shouldn't be used anymore, because I guarantee it's automated. But still, the point being, is the social media are lying. Sony has been lying for probably going on 10 years at this point. Corporate greed... It ain't even really working here because they make more money from microtransactions. What they're really and truly doing is they're trying to milk the existing fans completely and utterly penniless. They don't care about new fans. New fans wouldn't want to spend a whole heck of a heap of money at once, and especially not a subscription service. They want to see if they like the product to begin with and go from there. Again, don't at all consider this free weekend like a blessing or a or anything that you want to spend it positive it's truly just to get people hooked this playstation 30th anniversary is purely just so the company can milk even more money out of its existing user base there ain't going to be new people who are spending $700 on a PlayStation 5 Pro when they can play the same video games for $10 cheaper on average on the PS4 that has probably 90% as good of graphics anyway. It's not going to happen. You can get a used PlayStation 4 for probably well under $200 at this point. And sir, the load times are longer. But you know what, folks? Especially for a new game when you're paying $10 less for it, it's by far the better bargain. Honestly, at this point, again, I'm not all that surprised of making this video, but I still genuinely don't even understand why this is happening. Like this, I would hope is a glitch, but for some sad reason, I sort of kind of believe it's on purpose. They want to get people pissed because then they're going to do stuff like I am, but spread it around and all that on various social medias and all that, that like that sort of trending algorithm. The ones with the algorithms in which get clickbait and views and all that and then people commenting. Because the more people commenting on the platform itself makes those money, the ones that actually make money from the con from the comments and the... Uh, algorithms and all that, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. Odyssey Library don't have to worry about that kind of thing. I don't even think Library even has an algorithm. So yeah, there's that too. Because that benefits the individual platforms, because there's more content, or there's more comments, there's more engagement, all that. And then it also benefits Sony and PlayStation as well, because any publicity is good publicity. It's more people talking about the platform. It, get, it gets more news circulating about PlayStation, and then people look at PlayStation and see the 30th anniversary and on like that. This is truly and really any publicity is good publicity. A whole heck of a heap of people are going to say stuff about that. Probably not that many people are going to make full videos about it, but even just doing a little quick t t like two or three sentence post on social media. If enough people do that and say... Hey, I'm supposed to be playing online right now. It's after midnight in my region, but it ain't working. And stuff along the lines of that. 
guess what? It gives Sony and PlayStation attention. They don't care about the new users. For new users, I'd say really about the only thing they'd want is a genuine gaming experience. And that's almost impossible to get with modern games. There's some microtransaction that has gone to macrotransaction heavy. They're so online based versus online only. Like even 10 years ago, microtransactions were a pretty big deal. Online based games were a pretty big deal and generally seen as a negative. Nowadays, the online only games are a massive negative and the macrotransactions are a massive negative and yet it still is getting worse. And to end off this video, I theoretically could have just made this rant hate video and cuss like a sailor because that's what it truly and really deserved. But like I've said from the very beginning, the point of rant hating is to where I can actually explain. A lot of times with Gran Turismo or some of the times with like NBA 2K and actually fairly long winded explanation of how it could be fixed. Like individual instances of the penalty system for Gran Turismo, whether it's 4 or 7. Or individual instances of like the shooting in NBA 2K. Or the individual way this number of NBA 2K is overly monetizing or whatever it may be. In explaining individual circumstances. But for this one, it's about as straightforward as it gets. Don't manipulate your existing and loyal user base. Don't just make the 30th anniversary about making money. Actually making it truly giving back to the fans. Make it to where you can play online for free like Sony quite literally said they were going to do in the past and lied about it. They've been lying for years now. Like I said, I would not be making this video right now if I were playing online. And that sounds familiar, doesn't it? I've made a video in the past about how I would not be making the video about... Gran Turismo 7 on March 3rd because I should have been playing or March 3rd 2022 because I should have been playing Gran Turismo 7. I already had bought the game and I specifically made the New Zealand account so that I could play in the time zone and it's right there so it's proof that it's in the time zone. Things repeat and I generally don't well I mean like I said I kind of have an idea it's to make clicks and all that but in the literal sense I don't know why. Like I don't know why the AI and social media is advertising it happen happening i don't know why they screw over again it could even be some existing people who might be on vacation or whatever it may be i don't understand that they're screwing over everyone with stuff like this but again it gets clicks and all that so there's some basis to it but i genuinely don't understand why they don't care about new players i i don't understand that it's even against corporate greed because corporate greed they could figure out ways to monetize everyone i'm sure they have experts in there that they could get to where they could figure out how they could monetize every penny out of the new players as well but they seem to all they care about is making the where the loyal and overall committed fan base that has been with the platform playstation to some extent even sony for many many years completely dry and out of money out of patience out of everything they're alienating their core and loyal fan base and not caring about the new fan base whatsoever that's destined to fail it should be a lot of positivity for the playstation 30th anniversary shouldn't it but instead it's negative on top of negative on top of negative on top of negative again do not take this free weekend as anything is what it is Truly, really just trying to get people hooked so then they can make even more money. This is purely about monetization. This is purely about the company. This is not about the fans at all, and they're not even doing it as good as they could to make money for the company. This is a failure in every way, shape, and form. And again, I wouldn't even be making this video if I could simply play online when quite literal social medias tell me that I could right now be playing online.